This chord progression, these four chords have been used again and again in so many really famous and popular songs in older music and newer music too. I'm going to show you some simple ways that you can start playing them yourself and make them sound great even if you're pretty new to playing. We're going to learn some nice positions to play them in and then go through some simple rhythms and patterns to get you started, the kind of things that are actually useful for playing chords to songs. Once you've learned a few different patterns then you can start improvising and experimenting a bit. I bet this chord progression will sound really familiar to a lot of people, of course each individual song will do its own unique thing with the chords. But just before we get started, jump down into the comments section and let me know which songs you think sound like they might use these chords for some part of the song. Which melodies can you hear or imagine being sung over the top? If you're stuck, check in the description, I've got a list of a whole bunch of songs that I could think of. Let's get into it then. So we're going to do this in the key of C major, that just means we're only using the white notes. I do want to point out though that lots of songs you hear will be played in other keys too, but don't worry, I've got you covered. Stick around to the end so then I can show you a really easy, quick way you can find these same chords in any other key. Okay, so the chords we're going to use are C major, G major, a minor and F major. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, you'll see. And we're going to be playing with a chord in our right hand and a single note in our left hand. First we'll go through the positions we're going to use, then how to move between them, and then in those positions we'll be playing patterns and rhythms. Let's take a look at the first chord first, that's C major, and we're going to play it like this. That C there is actually middle C, so we're in the nice warm sounding range on the piano, and that's the C that's closest to the middle of your piano. You might have already learned to play a C major chord like this. So the chord has a C, an E, and a G. All I've done is I'm playing the G down here instead. It's the same notes in a different order, so it is the same chord, and we're just gonna use fingers one, three, and five to play that. When we rearrange the notes like this, it's actually called a chord inversion shape I'm using. You don't need to think about that for this if you haven't heard of it. They are really helpful and important to learn though to get familiar with playing chords and different ways you can play them. There's lots of ways that we can play chords. So there's a couple of videos linked below in the description you should watch after this one. For the left hand, we're just going to use finger one, the thumb, and we're going to play the next C down. The left hand will just be playing the root note of each chord, the note that the chord starts from, the one it's named after. The next chord is G major, and for that we're just going to use the regular root position shape. And for that we're going to use fingers 1, 2 and 4, that helps us move between chords. We'll get to moving between chords in a second though. In the left hand we're going to use finger 4 on the G below the C you just played before. The third chord is A minor, and we're going to use the regular root position again for that. And we're going to go back to fingers 1, 3, and 5. Left hand, finger 3 on the A, just above the G you played. The last chord then is F major, and we're going to play it like this. With fingers 1, 2, and 5. If you already recognise an F like this, then I've just put the F up here instead, just rearrange the order of the notes, that's another chord inversion. This is actually called a first inversion, and the reason I'm using a mixture of positions, what we call chord voicings, is to create a nicer sound in the way that the chords move from one to the next. These are all close positions to each other which tend to work quite well. For the left hand then, finger five down to the root note F. It's really helpful to do the work just moving through these positions first, it's going to make everything else much easier. And then if you're very new to piano, I suggest doing the right hand and the left hand separately before trying them together. The right hand started here on fingers 1, 3 and 5 on the C chord. Then we move down to the G. See your fingers 2 and 4 are free. Make sure to keep your wrist relaxed and loose as you lift it up. So we're lifting the hand so it can then come down to change the chord. That's important not to force it awkwardly sideways. From here, you lift up and move back to fingers one, three, five on the A minor. So when you lift up, your hand is nice and relaxed, then you're free to remold your hand shape and, and use other fingers to come down. So it's one, three, five for the A minor. Then for the F, you're gonna lift up, spread your hand shape a little bit and come down on one, two, and five. For the F major, and then it just loops around back to the C and we go through it all again. So lift up and use your arm to move your hand over a little bit and back to fingers one, three and five for the C. So for the left hand we can reach everything in one hand position. Finger one on the C, down to four on the G, up to three on the A, down to five on the F, and then back to the thumb on C. 
Then try hands together. Don't worry about timing just yet. Just practice going through all four chords. Go as slowly as you need, really focusing on the movement and the fingers, the movement of your wrists and getting the fingers right and everything, nailing the landings comfortably. Um, and if you need, you can build up. You can just try the first two chords, then the first three and build up to four and then looping it round. Okay, now we have the chords. There's lots of things that can be done with them, even just using these basic positions that sound great. So here's a few common patterns that we might play that's really useful to learn. And once you've got the pattern in your hands, you can then just do the same pattern on each position. Now songs that use this chord progression will commonly either be playing one bar of four beats per chord. That's just to a count of four, you'll see what I mean or the chords change twice as often every two counts. I'm gonna show you both ways, but just quickly, could you please click the like button because that's really helpful for the channel. We're gonna start by just holding the chords for that count. This is a typical thing you might do in a song anyway, in a more low energy section. Doing exactly what we did before, but now we have to find the next chord in time. So use the time on the chord you're on to think ahead. So for four counts per chord, that's this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. And for two beats per chord, that sounds like this. We still count to four, but change every two like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Tempo might vary depending on what song you want to play, but to start with, go as slow as you need to. Then we can lift the energy by playing the chord, hitting the right hand on every beat. So when it's four counts per chord, that looks like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Just remember to keep your wrist movement nice and fluid when you're moving up and down. I'm using a bit of pedal with that. You don't have to if you haven't learned how to use it yet, but it can make it sound a bit nicer. Two beats per chord would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. A way we can add a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more groove to that is by putting a, another bass note, the same note, playing it again, on the and just before we change chord, like this. I'll do this a bit slower. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. The and is halfway in between the beat. It might be helpful to think of that in the way your hands move. So that would have been together, right, left, together, right, left together and so on. For the next pattern, we're gonna play the ands in between every beat in the left hand. This creates more of a driving rhythm. It's a really common pattern that we use to play piano. Here's how it sounds with four beats per chord. So we're gonna go one and two and three and four and or think of it as together, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Keep your wrists nice and fluid, keep them constantly moving and then we just go round and round back to the C. When you play this two beats per chord you're pretty much playing what Paul McCartney plays in the verses in Let It Be. There's a couple of extra bits going on with that too but you're almost there. So together, left, right, left, change. Together, left, right, left, together, left, right, left, together, left, right, left, together. We can create a really similar effect, the same rhythm, by breaking up the notes in the right hand. So if we take the hand position, and then we play the top two, and now we're gonna use our thumb and thumb the ands in our right hand, like this, we break them up, we go back and forth. It creates the same pattern, it's just gonna sound slightly different because the and note is a bit higher up, so it's got a bit of a different texture. So we just go back and forth and do the same pattern on each position. So the top two with the bass note, and then go back and forth in the right hand. And then we change and do that on each position. So fast it would sound like this.
And to make your playing a little bit more varied in terms of feel and texture, sometimes you could just hit the middle one instead of hitting both top notes like this. So, so maybe start off with the top two to have a thick sound to emphasize beat one, and then just do the middle one. You don't have to do that every time, you can just do it sometimes for a bit of variety. And when you start adapting the rhythms you do, this is when you're getting into improvisation with the patterns that you're playing. That's why it's good to practice lots of different patterns because they become part of your vocabulary that you can draw upon. Okay, the last pattern is gonna sound like this. So on each position, we're just going to go together, right, left, right. We're not going to count this because I think actually if you're just a beginner, this might make it a bit more confusing than it is. I think it's better to just try and hear this and feel it a bit more naturally. Practice just getting comfortable on one chord and then once it feels good, just like pausing in between each one, then try changing chord and building up to doing all four and then looping it around. Together, right, left, right, together, right left right together right left right together right left right together endless things that can be done with these chords to make them more elaborate and i wouldn't have time to talk about everything in this video of course but i just want to give you a couple of things to think about firstly just experimenting with rhythms and patterns breaking up these notes in slightly different ways creating different feels but using the positions that we just did and secondly, trying out some other chord voicing. So playing the same chords in different positions in a slightly different range, perhaps like this. Those two things are a really good place to start getting used to improvising and playing chords in different ways. We also often use more notes in the left hand, commonly fifths and octaves too. But if you want a video on more ideas like that, then do let me know in the comments below what you wanna see. There's all kinds of patterns and rhythms to play with, even just using the notes and breaking them up in different ways across the piano. You can use fills, add notes onto the chords for a bit of extra color here and there, play with the dynamics and the range of the piano, bass lines and all sorts. You pick this stuff up and add it to your musical vocabulary as you go and pick apart how things work from copying others and learning lots of different music. It's best to start simple, of course, though, but all the training you do, all the theory, the technique, the ear training and learning about how chords work and stuff as well gives you more freedom. You'll also want to play these chords in other keys too sometimes, so here's how to find out what they would be. We were just in the key of C major using the C major scale, so we just need to think about where in the scale we began those chords, what type of chord they were, and then we just use chord numbers like this. If we just number the notes of the scale, we can see that the first chord, C major, began on the first note, so we call that chord one. So instead of saying C major, we're gonna say one major. By the way, this is the quick version to help you out with this, but we're really talking about the chords of a key here, and I posted a video on that recently, you can check out after this. It's a really important, useful thing for everyone to learn. The next chord was G major. G is the fifth note of the scale, so that's chord five. Then it was A minor, a is the sixth note of the scale, so that's chord six. And the F is the fourth note of the scale, so the F major is now chord number four. We then call this a one, five, six, four progression in a major key. And that's really a better way to think about how the chords work. Now we can make it work in any other key. Let's do G major. Here's the notes in the G major scale. We need to find one, five, six, four. So chord number one is gonna be G, G major. Chord number five is gonna start from the fifth note, D. D major. The next one's six, so E's the sixth note of the scale, and it was a minor chord that time, so we want E minor. Then it was four, fourth note of the scale is C, so that's C major. Now obviously they're not the same chords as we played before, but those chords are in the same place in the key, in the scale, as the other ones were in the key of C. And that means that the way that the chords move is gonna sound the same, you can sing the same melodies over the top of them, it'll just be in a different range. Of course then you just have to find nice positions to play those chords in, which is why it helps to practice your inversions and stuff. 
stuff. And you can use that number system to find the chords in any key. But if you want to see the answer quickly or check what you've done is right, then I'll post a link in the description below. I did a blog post a while ago on the four chord song. And in that post, I've got a table which has the four chords in every key listed out for you. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Remember, after this, you can watch the inversions video to help you get familiar with playing chords in different ways. There's the chords of the key video and a practice one as well, which is a really important thing to do. There's some worksheets I have available on my website as well. There's a couple with all the finger numbers and graphics for all the major and minor scales and a few other theory topics and stuff too. Thanks for watching.